Clark. Hey y'all, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to this, my 15th anti-haul video, aka... Hi, I'm Kimberly Clark. I'm a drag queen, a feminist, and an anti-consumerist YouTube beauty guru. Some of you have suggested that I leave all political or social justice related discussions out of my beauty videos. Beauty videos like this, my anti-haul series, which has hundreds of thousands of views and has inspired hundreds of thousands of anti-consumerist videos. But my politics are me. My values are me. And when the communities that raised me, created me, and taught me everything that I know are under attack, I will advocate for them with every fiber of my being and on every soapbox I got. This, my YouTube channel, currently at 65,028 subscribers, is my biggest box. Which is why I created my Listen Up series. Now, I would love for you to watch any and all videos in my Listen Up series, but for now, I'd like to draw your attention to one specific video. My street interviews at the Trans Day of Action in New York City in 2016. A lot of you probably heard the recent bigotry coming out of the White House and were outraged, but some of you might have not even really cared, and others may have actually agreed with it. I am not going to debate you about this issue right now in the intro to my anti-haul video, uh, or ever, actually. But what I am interested in is sharing the voices and stories of gender nonconforming and transgender people to help you, my lovely viewer, expand your experience. Maybe hearing these voices will help you see trans people as people and not a burden. And maybe then you might start to get a little mad, maybe even a little woke. So I'm asking you right now or after this video, but today, watch my 14 minute and 15 second video of street interviews of the Trans Day of Action in New York City. And after you do, if you liked it, share it. Help add the voices of trans and gender nonconforming people to the conversations that affect their lives. As Kai says in the video, we can't be free until everybody's free. And you have the power to listen to and to fight for the most marginalized people in our society. That power is your voice. And sometimes it might even be more powerful than makeup. Thanks for your time, and thanks in advance for watching my Listen Up video. Okay, now, back to my 15th anti-haul video, aka what I'm not gonna buy. What I'm not gonna buy. I am here with some anti-consumerism for your nerve, mama. This is it. We're on 15th anti-haul. What? I got a notebook? If you don't know what this is, I'm using hyperbole to combat the epidemic of consumerism that's perpetuating all of the internets. People on YouTube are telling you to buy stuff all the time. I'm here to, I'm your antidote to that, baby. I'm going to tell you what not to buy. And I'm not just going to talk shit about some makeup for no reason. I'm going to tell you why you're not going to buy it. Why I'm not going to buy it. Oh, that's the other thing. These are all personal. They're very personal. Makeup's very personal, as you can see. Listen, some of this stuff will work great for you. Some of it won't work for me. That's just why we're talking about it. I'm just here to offset the scales. You know why we're here. You're good. All right. Let us jump into this 15th anti oh! The first product that I'm not going to buy is this. This is the Kim Kardashian West KKW Contour Stick. So everyone reviewed this product. A lot of people got this product because they went to a makeup launch at Kim Kardashian. So I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you, Kim. It's fine. We can, we'll talk about it someday. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe, I don't know. We'll talk, we'll, maybe we'll talk about it. If you want to talk about it, I don't need to talk about it. I'm fine. Like, I'm cool that I wasn't, it's totally cool. I mean, I'm, I, like, I don't, I'm fine. You, you brought it up. These are contour sticks. So, as you may know, Kim Kardashian is the queen of contour. So, it makes sense that eventually she would release a makeup product that would help you achieve contour. She really brought drag contouring, like cream contouring, into the mainstream, just via the hand of amazing makeup artists. And basically with the launch of this product, she said that she wants to, you know, bring all the expertise that she has gleaned from working with all these amazing artists on her face to the everyday consumer. Apparently that everyday consumer is not somebody that watches my channel, because if you watch my channel and you saw any review videos of these, you would be like, bullshit. The amount of product you get in this is a joke. 
It's, a, it's so minuscule. The shade range in this, if you watch any Kim Kardashian video where she's demonstrating it, like her uh, tutorial with Jaclyn Hill, she uses several different shades, like sh several different skin tones. There's like light, medium, and dark, and deep dark. There's, I think, four different shade ranges. And she uses multiple multiple sticks honestly like watching her use the product like i'm kind of like wow wouldn't it have been better to have this be like a multi-colored palette like you actually for your one skin tone use a lot of different shades on your face wouldn't it be kind of more practical for you to market this as like a palette most contour palettes are geared towards makeup artists and so maybe they didn't want to do that they wanted it to be more like a consumer friendly product but in reality like to get the kim kardashian look you need more than one of these contour sticks, which cost, by the way, $48. Now, of course, with that price, you're getting a brush, double-ended makeup tool thing, and a highlight stick as well. So you get a double-ended cream contour and a double-ended cream highlight. The bottom line with this is the shade range is not that huge. The product you get is unacceptably small. Listen, maybe if you had invited me over, we could have talked about it. I would have been like, Kim, you know, like, you, you gotta, like, you gotta at least, like, double the amount of product in here. I mean, these are, like, baby lipstick samples. They're, like, hardly, I mean, look how much, I'm just gonna show you this. This is, like, the actual professional makeup version of what she is marketing. It's a stick of cream product that you use to ch change the shape of your face. This is from the brand Krylon, and this is $24. And this is one that I've had for a while. This is TV White. Boom, for half the price. Really, Kim? In my hour and a half long kind of like makeup movie that I just published, I asked y'all if you wanted to see like a high-end like stick foundation comparison with theatrical stick foundations like these Krylon TV paint sticks and a lot of you said yes. So let me know what your favorite stick foundations or cream stick product formulas are so I could make sure to get the right ones and you know. Anyway, needless to say, I will not be adding the Kim Kardashian West contour sticks into that comparison. Congrats on your makeup launch. Again, no hard feelings about not inviting me to the launch party. Hopefully the, the future launches of your line will be a little bit more, uh, how shall we say, acceptable? Don't need it, not gonna buy it. Sorry, KKW contour sticks. Maybe I'll just like go to Sephora and get some lipstick samples and then that would basically be the equivalent of this. Just tape them together, tape two lipsticks together. Sorry. Sorry, Kim. Okay, next up is this. This is the Sisley Primer, the Sisley Paris Double Tensor, tensor, double tensor, double, double tensor, double tense. It's a makeup primer. So okay. So the last couple of anti hauls that I've done, I've thrown in like a high end skincare item, like really, really, really high end. And both times, the company uh, sent me the product for PR. So I look what I just got. Good jeans, Sunday Riley, good jeans. Remember I talked about this in my last anti haul? Sunday Riley, if you wanna send me this shit too, I'll try it out too, but God damn it, I'm never gonna buy this shit. Look, it's in my freaking hand. So I guess to, to begin talking about this product, I just wanna say, Sisley, bring it. Bring it. This is a $192 primer. I'm from Sicily, my family, my lineage is Sicilian. I don't think this has anything to do with that. Although I don't know. This is a gel primer that is supposed to just like make your skin very sticky and make makeup stick to it. I use a lot of primers. If you watch like any of my kind of videos where I get ready and do a lot of like makeup, you know, I do my, my you know, foundation and stuff, you see what primers I use. I usually use the Becca Evermatte Poreless Priming Perfector, the Lorac Porefection, and sometimes I'll, like, even use a spray or something, like a primer spray or a setting spray before I put on my foundation. If you want sticky on your face before you put your makeup on, get a setting spray like Blue Marble or... Dry clean tip, hairspray for your face. No, 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 but in all seriousness, like, the idea that this primer costs $192 because it will make your makeup stick to your face all day is a little ridiculous. You could watch people's videos where you see them, they do wear tests. This primer is better than nothing, and it's better than some primers, but it's not the best, most amazing, singular, unique primer out there. Therefore, $192 is ridiculous! I don't need it, and I'm not gonna buy it. Even if you send it to me, I'm not gonna buy it. That's just the truth. It's just too expensive, it's ridiculous for pre-makeup primer BS. No, no, Sicily. Arrivederci, go back to Tarmina. Get over, go to Corleone. Ah, arrivederci. Uh, sorry, sis. 
All right, number three. Oh, you knew it was gonna come. You knew it was gonna come to this. This is the Too Faced Glitter Bomb palette. I uh, got a glitter bomb in the mail for the first time. Thank you so much to my subscribers that sent me that. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate it. Actually, she sent a really beautiful, amazing note with it, which I do actually really appreciate, so thank you so much, Catherine, actually. But uh, a glitter bomb, if you don't know it, is, at least in this kind of YouTube lexicon, it's when people send a package to, like, a P.O. box or, like, a mail, like, a, one of their YouTubers or something, and they open. I think the express purpose of, the, of doing that is so that they will film themselves opening the package, like, on, like, a video, and it will fly everywhere and get everywhere. And it's, like, a glitter bomb, and it's horrible. I have a full review. Uh-oh, there's glitter in here. I, luckily, opened mine upside down by accident, and I was fine. I was fine. Needless to say, the connotation glitter bomb, I don't think is a positive one. I just don't think, I think it, I don't know. I don't think it is. So, first off, me and this palette are already at odds. We're already at odds. Furthermore, if you watch any of the promos for this, like, you see Jared Blendino talking about how Too Faced kind of, like, invented the first glitter eyeshadow, and he is proud of it. We don't want glitter in eyeshadows. We want glitter and eyeshadows. We want them separate. There are lots of really great ways to apply glitter to the eye. Using a powdered shadow with glitter packed into it is the worst one of all of those ways. The worst! If you want to get glitter on your eye, use a glitter glue or a glitter primer, and then glitter. Just actual loose glitter. If the glitter primer is good enough, like the NYX glitter primer, which is my personal favorite, then it's going to be fine. Glitter, like actual glitter particles, like defined as like physical metal or plastic particles that are reflective, that are chunkier than the powder in an eyeshadow, when you put them in an eyeshadow, they don't have anything to stick to. The eyeshadow is powder. As you apply it, those chunks aren't going to stick to your eye. This is true, and everyone knows it. And so this glitter bomb palette comes with glitter glue. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought it was an eyeshadow, so we didn't need the glitter glue, but now we need the glitter glue. Why don't I just use glitter? Why do I have an eyeshadow? Why did I buy an eyeshadow palette when I could have just bought some glitter that I like in all the colors that I like instead of eight colors? And I don't even know if I'm going to use all of them because I'm a person with one body and a limited amount of time. If you want to do a glitter look, there are so many ways to do a glitter look. I have a, gl a tutorial about how to put freaking glitter on your eye. It's a whole get ready with me. It's very in depth. You could use any glitter that's approved for cosmetic use or like face use and glitter glue. It's super, super easy. You do not need to buy a glitter eyeshadow eye palette. This was a gimmick when it was created back in 1980 whenever, whenever the gl first glitter eyeshadow was invented, and it's still a gimmick now. Watch any review video of any makeup palette. What is the one type of shadow that people always have issue with? Glitter eyeshadows. The chunky glitter eyeshadow. That chunky stuff, in, like a matte eyeshadow base with chunky glitter in it. Like, no. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Honestly, the worst shadow that I would ever, like, the worst type of shadow. And this is a palette full of... I just... I'm sorry. I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. Too Faced Glitter Bomb. Dot com. Dot co. Dot UK. Dot... Your domain expired. I'm, you got to renew it. You got to renew. Sorry. Okay, this... So I feel like this is actually part of an entire kind of... I, I don't know if it's winter or holiday or what. Launch of Marc Jacobs Beauty. I know there are a bunch of eyeshadow palette restocks and stuff. Like, I feel like there's more to this collection than this one makeup brush. In my research, I learned that yes, there are six new eyeshadow palettes being launched with terrible names like Scandalust, Glambition, Provocateur, Frivolux, Smartorial, and Edgitorial. These are terrible. These are the worst punny names ever. They're terrible. But I do just want to talk about this one freaking makeup brush. This is the Crease Brush by Marc Jacobs. It's part of a line of makeup brushes that are being released currently, I think. They're all pretty high-end. This grease brush is $36. I have an entire anti-haul devoted to makeup brushes, and then in my last anti-haul, I did an even more kind of skewering of makeup brushes, so I've, I've, I'm not gonna go super into detail with this, other than to say the reason I'm not going to spend $36 on a crease brush is because my favorite crease brush costs $3. The e.l.f. Studio Crease Brush. This is the best 
crease brush ever. If you want more info on this crease brush, please check out my All About Makeup Brushes video. I will give you an entire in-depth review about why this is like my favorite makeup. It's my favorite makeup brush of all time. It's so good. It's the best. It's $3. Elf Studio Crease Brush. Why when I have this? Would I ever buy that? Why? Why, Mark? Why? I would spend $30 maybe on like a makeup brush. Maybe. Maybe. And, it's, and like only if it was like a big powder brush or something that like I felt like, you know, I don't know. Like I, this is so good, this $3 crease brush. Like I don't know why you would need to, I would need to pay $36 for one. MJ, Mark by... Bye, 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 bye. No, I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. No crease brush. No, sorry, Mark. Nope. Simply not going to buy you because I've already found my love. I found her. And she's cheap. <laughs> sorry, but we're, we're like a thing. You want to test the strength of this love? You can try, but it will not break. This love has taken its toll on me. I mean, you know, real love. It's, it's something to set my heart free. Real love. Whoa! I'm love, love will keep us together. I mean, think of me and this brush whenever some other brush comes along singing a song. Don't mess around. You just gotta be strong. That, my friends. Okay. This is the Urban Decay Velvetizer. It is a powder that you can add to your liquid foundations to make them more full coverage. I would just say a cheaper thing would be for you to buy a full coverage foundation that doesn't cost $34. You're not gonna buy this expensive powder and then like be baking up your little surprise batches every other day. So now I'm gonna try it with this one. Now I'm gonna try it with this one. Which one's gonna be? No, oh my God, no. If you have a lot of liquid foundations that don't work for you, get rid of them. Get rid of them, get rid of them. Get foundations that work for you. There are so many foundations out there. You can find it. It's not that hard, you'll be fine. Furthermore, it, this is like a powder that you mix with a liquid to get a cream. Again, just buy a cream foundation. That's, well, I feel like there's some kind of like, it's again, it's that theatrical kind of consumer thing, right? Where it's like a, a cream foundation feels too theatery or too cakey or something. But if you have this like liquid light luxurious foundation and then you add something with it to make it that cakey creamy texture, then it's not as weird because you're add you're mixing it and it's not, I don't know, the cake face association isn't clear in the kind of thinking about it. But basically, you're just making your liquid makeup into theatrical cakey makeup. That's what you're doing. I'm all for making stuff. If you watch my new series, Make It, you know that I'm like, if you can make something that's 100% for you instead of buy something that's 50% functional for you, then go for it, right? But honey, I'm making things out of foam core and dresses and stuff. I'm not chemically mixing. I'm not like pretending like I bet I could make a better foundation than a makeup company. And if I were, I would start my own freaking makeup company. I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. Uh, you know, I, do this with any powder. If you really want to make add powder to your foundation and make it a cream, try it with some powder you already got. Try it. Try it. I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. Gimmick. Bye. No. So uh, in uh, my 11th anti haul video, I think was my 11th one, was all disappointments. It was all products that I actually tried instead of things that I won't be buying, things that I've actually tried. Instead of making a whole other video about products that I've tried, because I really didn't have enough that have totally failed me recently, I decided to just make this a segment in my anti hauls, which I think will be a recurring one. So this is a segment of products that I did try that I did not like. I'm calling it disappointments. So the Cranberry song, like Dolores Arden. For now, we're actually gonna talk about this product, which is a product that I recently hauled. I got this as a sample from Lush. This is the Lush Ultra Bland Facial Cleanser. This is just in a little sample thing. I'll put like a, in a picture of the actual product right here. This uh, product is basically like honey. Like it's like honey in a jar. It's supposed to be like very soothing and like get everything off your skin. I guess it's very soothing but this doesn't come off my skin. Like, I guess when it says get everything off your skin, it means put a layer of thick 
immobile honey sludge on your skin to conceal anything else that you might have had on your skin, then in that sense, it's very high functioning. My boyfriend used it first and was like, I took a shower and he washed his face in the shower and was like, I can't get this off my skin. Like it's on my face. And I was like, oh no, no, no. And then I tried it and I was like, I can't get it off my skin. Ah, like you have to wash your face again with something more astringent. It's like get it out of your skin. Like it's so weird. It's like a face wash that turns into a moisturizer, whether you like it or not. Like I'm not a fan of this. I'm so sorry. You know, I love Lush. I love, had a, uh, my lo everything else in my Lush haul I've been using. I love it. I gotta say, I can safely say that. They've been great. They have not been disappointments. But the Ultra Bland Facial Cleanser from Lush, I'm so sorry. I, ugh, it, ugh, it's like grossing. It's like skeeving me out thinking of it. Here, let me see if I could put it on my skin. Uh, like, it's sticky. It feels sticky. And then that's not gonna go anywhere now. Ugh. I mean, it smells great. It smells like honey. Like, I feel like it would be great on toast, but like not on your face. And finally, Bitter Lace Beauty, you may have heard of. They are an indie makeup brand. Now, you know, I don't like to anti-haul a ton of indie makeup brand things. Supporting local business and indie makeup brands is kind of like my whole MO as a creator on YouTube. I feel like it's actually really important in combating consumerism and capitalism and like the dangers of our global industrialized society it's like really helpful actually to like support local businesses and try to like really ha make sure your money is staying like within your community and supporting people in your community i think it's great but unfortunately this product was so irritating that i could not not anti-haul it this is the bitter lace beauty mermaid highlighter horror these are all powders that you can buy individually. Everything's really cute. It's packaged beautifully, like, it's really beautiful design. It's very, like, artistic and, like, creative and, like, you know, like, eclectic and pretty, like a mermaid, like, finding bits of trash and making her own world in a deep sea cave. Bitter Lace Beauty is, uh, the indie brand that, um, you may remember them from kind of creating the whole, like, rainbow highlighter trend. Thanks for that. Thanks, that was hours of my life spent watching and shuffling through review videos and people trying to make their own goddamn rainbow highlight. Oh my god, ah! Oh. The rainbow highlight was ridiculous because you can't use a rainbow highlight to highlight. Highlight means brighten, lift, and make look like it's coming forward. In order to do that, you need a color that is lighter than your skin tone or the tones that you're using to create the contour in your face. Rainbow? Doesn't do it. Rainbow makes it look like you got a rainbow on your face. I'm gonna guess that something like this, one of the pans in this palette, the blue, like, turquoise, I'm guessing that's gonna do a similar thing. It's just gonna make it look like you have a blue thing on your face. Do you wanna, if you wanna try out and see what blue, shimmery powder looks like on your face, I bet you got a blue, shimmery eyeshadow that you could practice with on your own. In fact, I bet you got blue, shimmery eyeshadows that will be dupes for any of these products. Blue eyeshadow is the eyeshadow that nobody wants to admit that they have in love, but we've got 300 of them. Like, we've got, uh, we've got, uh, look, I'm wearing this beautiful one. This is from Masquerade Mini Palette from Juvia's Place that one of my lovely subscribers sent me. Thank you. That was very sweet of you. It is called Zola. It's just like, come on, like, it's so pretty. Doesn't this, but this looks like one of the shades from the Mermaid palette. Like, well, I say, if you're interested in buying this Mermaid palette, look through your makeup collection right now, see how many blue shimmery eyeshadows you got, and then try to make a dupe palette on your own with your own eyeshadows before you buy this. You don't need a crazy gimmicky mermaid thing to look like a mermaid. If you want to look like a mermaid, look at all these beautiful photos from the mermaid parade. Cop one of their looks. I bet they did all that shit with like hot glue and a dream. Like you don't need to spend $214 on a mermaid highlighting palette to get that mermaid glow like that. No, no, no. Oh no. No. Na 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 na. No. I want to buy makeup that actually works. Makeup that looks good on my face, not just in the packaging. <gasps> 
I'm Kimberly Clark. This has been my 15th anti-haul video. Like I said in the intro to this video, please take the 14 minutes and 15 seconds that it takes to watch my Trans Day of Action interviews. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please check out my other videos. Of course, my Listen Up series, as you know. My What Happened to Your Face videos for more product reviews and like kind of actual, like real world kind of wear tests of products and stuff, et cetera. If you really want to support these videos and the work that I do on this channel, please consider becoming a patron of mine by making a per video donation to me via Patreon. And to you, my patrons that are already supporting me, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're the reason that I'm continuing, that I'm existing, that I'm keeping on, that I'm continuing to make these videos, and I thank you, and you're, it's all because of you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. I hope you enjoyed me and my wig. Yay. I'm Kimberly Clark. Bye! Can I, let me see your sign. Let's get it. Yes. What message do you have to parents that uh, may suspect their children are transgender or have come out to them as transgender? What, what advice could you give to them? Ask questions, listen, and love and accept them, no matter what. How has your experience changed over having had your son come out to you as transgender? And well, I started to recognize that my son is an individual with his own dream, his own aspiration. And I started to respect him as a human being, which is like awesome. My son is doing great and uh, I love him so much. Well, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so, 